Hi, Peter Charles here, Fooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today we're going to tie the partridge and orange fly, which is a traditional Yorkshire wet. I'm sure pretty well everybody who fly fishes has either used one or tied one. Uh, but we're going to tie it with a slight difference. We're going to add a bead to it in order to use this as a dropper fly on a Euronymphing rig. Uh, again, we wouldn't use this as a point fly. If you saw my previous video on, on caddis pupae, um, I'm not going to go through that full explanation again. If you want to see it, check it out. But the idea is the dropper fly needs some weight to be able to get down. You don't want it to hold up the point fly, but you don't want it so heavy that it, it sinks down so both of them are operating at the same level. You want this particular fly higher uh, as the dropper fly, so I'm using a smaller bead. So let's get looking at the materials and what it takes to tie a partridge and orange for use on a Euro nymphing rig. First up, we're going to be using a size 14 wet fly hook. This is the classic wet fly hook that you would use tying a regular partridge and orange. You know, the old Mustad 3906B. Our bead is not big. It's a two millimeter uh, tungsten. Uh, B, this one's a nickel finish, uh, sorry, a black nickel finish. You could use a straight black, a matte black, it doesn't matter. The advantage of doing this black colored bead is it does a reasonably good job of imitating the uh, wing buds on an emerging caddis. Our thread is a fire orange in an eight aught. Our body is orange floss. And our uh, hackle is partridge. Uh, and this is a pack. Now, the problem we get into with packs like this is there's not a lot of small feathers in here. And when you're doing a size 14, it's easy to not have small enough feathers to do the job. Typically, the hackle is twice the gape length, or width, I should say. So you, you're using relatively long hackles at twice the, the width, but still, these are often too long. If you're going to tie a lot of these, buy a skin. There's lots of short feathers on here which make this job easier. Now, for sake of argument, I've taken the feather out of the pack just to give you an idea what it's like to work with these. But as I say, if I'm tying for myself, I'm using the, uh, the skin. Okay, let's get started. The point where I'm starting my thread is the area where we're going to be uh, starting our floss and our floss body. Now for our floss. Drag it into position. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come around the bend with our thread. Work all the way around the bend and then we're going to come forward. Now this part's optional. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up the middle of this body. It's going to look ugly. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. It's not going to be a pretty body. But the idea behind this is caddis bodies tend to be fatter yeah, about halfway along their length. Almost pear-shaped. So we're going to sort of give this a bit of a pear shape to it. By adding some thread. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. Now the next step we're going to do is, normally you want to flatten your floss. That's typically what everybody does, and I do it too. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to spin my floss up put hack pliers on it. And what that does do is it turns it into more of a rope. And I am going to use it to segment this body. So it gives it more of a, a segmented look because the floss body will be rough instead of being nice and smooth. And I'm actually after that roughness. Now we snip off our floss. Finish this area. Clean this up. Now we're going to whip finish. Trim off our th thread. Now, I'm going to leave this mistake in. You see that bead went too far back. And that's because I don't have a big enough bump there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my thread again where I want the bead to stop, and I'm just going to bulk it up. 
It would have been a better idea for me to test the bead first. There we go. That's good. It's not going to move now. Now I can whip finish. So remember that little mistake I just made. Test first rather than cut first. Push your bead back and start your thread on the other side. Now, one of the problems we get into with tying partridge is a lot of the feathers that you find in these packs, uh, the barbs are too long. Um, you're supposed to have a barb that's roughly twice the gape, and often these are closer to three times the gape. So what I'm going to do with this one is I've trimmed off most of the barbs. I'm going to tie it in by the tip. I'm going to trim that tip off. Normally I don't do that. Normally I put, put a tying in point, but we're getting to so little of the tip left that I did it the other way. The other problem we get into with these feathers when we're working close to the tip is they're very delicate. So I'm going to be using um, hackle pliers which don't put a lot of pressure. So if I run into problems, it, it will, uh, if I pull too tightly, it's likely gonna slip off the quill. Now you're gonna get a bit more of a spiky appearance. That's okay, we'll work, work around that. Keep pushing the barbs back. Now when I tie off, I like to keep the barbs pushed back so they're out of the way. There we go. And we whip finish. Okay, there's our partridge in orange, tied as a dropper fly for uh, your nymphing. The whole idea behind this fly, just like the caddis pupa, is you're going to use this fly more downstream. So you might think of your point fly as being the fly that's most likely to work in the upstream dead drift part of the uh, drift. And then as you get downstream and, and the flies start to move and rise, this is where this fly is going to work. And what that bead does is help the fly to hang a little bit more vertical because it moves the center of gravity of the fly a little bit further back. So it will hang a little bit more vertical and look a little bit more natural. But there we go, partridge in orange, tied as a dropper fly. Uh, it's not conventional and it's deliberately kind of ugly in the body, but it's kind of work. Trust me on this one. This is the type of thing that really makes a difference on days between having a good day and a not so good day. Anyway, give it a try. Cheers. Mm -hmm.